up guys, Heeking here bringing you a manga review slash reaction to the latest One Piece, chapter 1049. So yeah, before I start, I will say that this is going to be a double review chapter. So I will be including chapter 1048, which I already reviewed, but I didn't upload. And I'm going to be including this one. So this is going to be together. So the first part is going to be 1048. And then the second half is going to be uh, 1049. Uh, and yeah, with that said, remember to like and subscribe, guys. And yeah, enjoy the uh, 1048 review. Sup, guys? Hicking here, bringing you a review on this week's One Piece, chapter 1048. I think there was a break last week. I could be wrong. I think there was a break last week. And now we're back with One Piece. So, yeah. Chapter 1048, 20 years. Before I start, guys, remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, let's dive into this chapter then. So, we... Where do we leave off? So, we got a new cover page here. And it's with Cracker and his ugly little sister, Bruli, I believe it was. And, uh, yeah, Germa 66, Cold-Blooded Voyage, Volume 10. Is Germa trying to infiltrate Chocolate Town again? So apparently, Broly, she's she's looking through the mirror, she's touching the mirror, and she's like pointing, and uh, you've got like the little thing above where it's showing images of Raiju and Ninji, I believe. So the assumption is that these two are here to get their siblings out. But the fact that it's done like this uh, makes me think that it's a twist and it might not actually be Ninji or Raiju. Uh, I did say, I think last, was it last chapter, where I was like, oh, the chapter before, they like, it's going to be them. But now I'm starting to think, nah, I mean, uh, is it them? I mean, because you get a question mark there. Like, is Germa trying to infiltrate? And there's a question mark. It might not be Germa, actually. This might be Oda pulling a big twist and a wall over her eyes and ends up being somebody else. And a lot of theories are going around that it might be Crocodile, actually, with uh, Mr. One, I believe, infiltrating and trying to rescue them for whatever reason. Um, which would be interesting if it is Crocodile, like, because at least then it means that he's finally, like, coming back into the main story and has been set up for what's going to come later on down the line. But, uh, yeah, that would be very cool. I, li I like Crocodile, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. So as we move further down, we go off where we ended with Luffy pretty much telling Momoshiki to get Onigashima out of the way because he's just made a giant ass hockey fist and he's about to knock Kaido through the freaking, uh, I, well, I, I guess at this point we could call it an island, can't we? Into the freaking island. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, you've got, you got freaking Momonosuke just flying there and it's like, Momo's answer, move Onigashima out of the way. Luffy, wait, that can't be done. And it's not... And he's having flashbacks to his, you know, his parents and his sister. And uh, I, f I think this is his mother saying this. I know you will find a way to revive the Kazuki clan in the future. And now you've got Momo hitting Onigoshima with his head. Like trying to push it. Trying to get it out of the way. You know, he's, he's just like, he's just... And I'm wondering if that might work actually. Maybe if he uses enough force. But uh, I don't think it will. I don't think it will. And then we get this little panel page of Luffy and Kaido just staring each other down. You mean, you've got Luffy still grabbing onto Kaido with one hand, like, <laughs> and getting that fist ready to punch him through. It's just, it's just great. And it's like, and Kaido's just like, very well, I'll take this one head on. Have you heard Straw Hat? And Luffy's just like, what? What have I heard? And it's like, what? This country's hero. And as Kaido is speaking, he starts burning up. Like, like it's like, I think he's releasing all the fire or ash or breath or whatever, and it's just sort of like burning him up now, like covering his his head and face. It's like this country's hero burned to death 20 years ago, and now Kaido. It's so weird what's going on with this drawing, but it looks like Kaido is on fire. Like he's 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 made black flames, flaming drum dragon. This has been a lawless land since then. They've waited all this time for you saviors to show up. So, yeah, Kaido just turned himself into fire, essentially, like... And Luffy ends up letting Kaido go. He's like, hot, it's too hot, like... And uh, Kaido's just like, don't worry, it's okay to let go. I assure you, I won't run. After all, your right hand won't come crushing down. So, Kaido's... Kaido's taking the, you know, the, he, he's believing the fact that Luffy is bluffing. Like, he's not going to bring the hand down when Onigoshima is right beneath Kaido. Like, he doesn't see Luffy doing this. He doesn't see Luffy going out and potentially, you know, destroying Onigoshima and taking out all his allies and that. So, 
you know, Kaido is thinking, yeah, he's not going to do anything. He's take, he's taking his bluff basically. But I think, I think Luffy might. I think Luffy might. If it comes down to it, Luffy will hit Kaido through Onigashima, and it's going to be this, it's going to be this time thing where something is going to happen, like a miracle, and Momonosuke is going to be able to get Onigashima out of the way just in time. But Luffy, he's not going to. He's probably going to hesitate for a little second. But then he's going to be like, no, I'm, I'm going for it. Screw it. You know, your time's up. You didn't get out of the way. It's fair enough. Like, I'm going for it. And Kaido's just going to be like, oh, crap. He's, he was for real. Uh, but, yeah, we get this little panel where Kaido's body, his, his hot, flaming body gets too close to one of the horns on Onigashima. And it burns the horn off. It literally melts it. It's melting the horn off. So that's how hot he is right now. And and it's 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 a miracle that Luffy's hand didn't melt either. Do you know what I mean? So he, I imagine yeah, Luffy's hand was covered in hockey. It is. It is probably. Pro it is most likely covered in hockey at this point. So that's why maybe it didn't melt off. But uh, he's he's lucky. But uh, yeah, and kind of like because I'm going to vaporize it. Oh, that's interesting way of saying after your right hand won't come crashing because I. So no, he's not. It's not like he's taking the bluff. Okay, my bad. He's saying he's gonna he's, he's gonna melt Luffy's hand. That that, that that's how stronger Kaido's. He's being arrogant at this point. He's saying, like, I'm stronger than your hand. Like, I'm going to melt your hand before it. Like, even if it comes down, it's just going to melt away. It's not going to hit. And Luffy's like, like, I'll let that happen. Gome, 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 no. And then, you know, Kaido just, he looks pretty freaking awesome. Of like, all blacked out. And that's awesome. Uh, rising dragon. And we get these little flashbacks to Luffy when he was training with uh, the, the grandpa dude. And what you call Haki is known as Ryu here in Wano, and Luffy's like, Gramps taught me how to attack without making contact. I'm going to knock you to the bottom of hell. So I think, I think we are going to see Luffy knock Kaido down into the crater, I believe, where Big Mom was, unless, unless it's moved from there since then, I think. It might have moved since there, so maybe we're going to get another crater being created. And um, I, I don't know if this is, uh, I think, I think both, Characters go for an attack, and Luffy's like Bara Gun Gun in, and then uh, uh, Kaido's like Blazing Bunga. So, w what's with the weird names? I don't know, but uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, reference to Bara Garbali, uh, the Hindu monkey god, potentially the inspiration for Sun Wonku, right? So, that Luffy's attack is like an is a hint at that, then. And you got them both going at it, basically hitting, and there's like this. Big, massive, like, fiery explosion in the sky. And Luffy's, like, you know, he's trying not to get, like, he's trying to hold on, not get knocked out. And, you know, Kaido, like, he's still, he, it looks like he's biting Luffy's hand as well. So, God knows what's going on there. And then we cut down to the various characters in Onigoshima. First stop being Usurp, you know, we got the water. He drops Kinemon and Kiku and is like, oh, no, Kin, Kiku, I didn't mean to drop you. Please be alive. Don't go dine on me now. Um... I'm curious if any of the samurai are actually going to die. Like, maybe when this arc, like, this fight is over, we get all the samurai reunited, but then we get some deaths, maybe. Like, like that last moment, and like, you know, we freed one, or finally, and they die. Like, it it would be nice to get a death or two in this arc. Um, it would be nice. I mean, uh, I mean, for Christ's sake, we lost Petro in a, a layer cake island. It just, it, like, I feel like ever since we've gotten to the new world, um, you know, it... We ha we haven't uh, lost too many characters really. Like uh, I think it's gone to the point now where we, we where some so, some characters need to die, and I, I personally I wouldn't I wouldn't want it to be Kinemon and that, but I, I I feel like with the way they're going at it, maybe, maybe one of the other samurai like Ashura I think, uh, but uh, we'll see we'll see. But uh, yeah, we we cut to other characters. You know, you got people like uh, you got the samurai just dancing on I mean, Sir Straw Hat. We're counting on you. Take Kaido down. Finish him for good. I mean, these guys are all for death now at this point. And then we got Kawa Kawa Tatsu. Is, is that how you say his name? Uh, the 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 fish samurai. Uh, he's like you know he's breathing hard. Like Papa, this nightmare won't end unless Kaido is driven from this land. And then we cut to a flashback. This, most of this chapter is like quick flashbacks of what happened 20 years ago. And, you know, Older's just been burnt in the, uh, in that, uh, dish, in that, uh, ball, if you will. Older Summer, his retainers are getting away. Don't let a single one escape. And you've got, we see this panel of, uh, Kawatsu, Kinemon, uh, uh, Raizo, I think uh, Nikogomushi is there as well, and they're all running, Older Summer, like, don't look back, Older Summer, like, they're all crying, and, they're, they're, they, you know, they still got the freaking, uh, hand, you know, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, the ha handcuffs on, and they're racing for it, and then, bang, there's a shot, uh, I don't know, I don't know who's been shot, you've got someone crying, I think it might be Kiku, 
uh, and there's Orochi, and like Orochi's just screaming, there is only one place those samurais would go, uh, Kuri. And Kaido, like, he just sees the smoke and is like, he's listening to what Orochi's saying to him. He's like, they intend to safeguard Oda's heir, Momonosuke. And Kaido's like, so he has a son. I'll deal with him myself. That's a bit weird that he says this. So he has a son. I'll deal with him myself. When he was fighting Oda, Oda didn't, you know, he, he lost his concentration when he was about to beat Kaido from because of the, uh, because of that witch with the, uh, the, the face, uh, um, fruit, and she transformed into Momonosuke. Why would Kaido, uh, 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 Kaido say, so he has a son? He would have known he has a son. That's a bit weird. I don't know if there's a mistranslation or not, but that's a bit, that's a bit weird, isn't it, for that panel? So, you've got the citizens getting in the way, like, telling him to have mercy, you know, stop haunting the Kazuki clan, but Kaido just freaking knocks them around, telling them to move. And Orochi being a piece of crap that he is, you know, don't hesitate to shoot any vermin that dares defy their shogun. So yeah, they're just, you know, you've got the pirates, you've got the beast pirates just shooting the citizens at this point. Reinforcing what a scumbag Orochi is. And then we come to uh, the, the Kuri castle, you know, Oda's castle, which has been burned down now. And they're like, what of Oda's wife? She was confirmed dead in uh, Bakuru town. No one else was seen fleeing the ruins of Oden castle. The Kazuki line is officially dead. So, yeah, now Orochi, this is the point where, in the story, Orochi takes over, like, and he's like, now the time has come for you, Daimyo, to choose. Will you help us usher in a new Iwano, or will you try to wage war? And we get this, uh, we get this panel of these characters, we get this panel of these characters uh, that we, I think we might have seen them before in flashbacks. Um, and one of them looks like freaking Zoro. Like this, this could be Zoro's granddad. It could even be his dad. For like, I mean, it's twenty years, right? So, it, it could very well be Zoro's dad. But we we start with this big fat dude, uh, like circle under the thing. He's called Kibo Kiba Kibi. And then we got another one like spots here, uh, Hakumai. And then uh, obviously the net, the third one is the guy who looks like Zoro's dad. Like he looks like Zoro basically, and his name is Ringo. All the names, Ringo, that's just, that's hilarious. And we got this other dude called uh, Yuda. And then, uh, so it's only four actually, it's only four, it's only four daimyos it looks like. Uh, the, the first panel here, in the, in the actual panel here, is just uh, someone taking their blade out. And then it's, these, it's, the, it's the panel for these four characters here, so yeah. Um, it looks like Kaido transforms into a dragon at this point, And then you've got the four of them rushing in. And then it seems that... Yeah, sorry for the camera cutting off, but yeah, you see more characters, more samurai here, they're on horses, and they're rushing in, and they're like, we refuse to recognize a shogun that isn't a Kazuki, it is our duty to avenge Oda, and Kaido going for his flame blast and blowing these guys away, uh, flowing out, you've got one, you've got one samurai using a cannon, you've got one using a gun trying to shoot him, one dude just jumping away from the flames being caused, and Orochi just laughing it off like the madman that he is. Like, ha, ah, weaklings, it would be an insult to call any of you samurai. Kaido just blasting away. You've got one panel of a samurai holding another samurai. He's like riddled with, it looks like he's riddled with bullets. So, uh, you know, damn it. If only that fool didn't have Kaido back in him. Quiet, Orochi has ears everywhere. Kaido's forces will find us, which is a big truth. You know, the only reason Orochi won was because of Kaido. If Kaido hadn't been there... Orochi would have been killed easily. Like, he's a weakling. He's a pathetic little weakling. Like. So then we get more flashbacks. We, we kind of them basically building the factories at this point. You know, track down every able-bodied young man you can and bring them here. You, you've got them working in the weapon factories, making the cannons. This entire country will become our weapons factory. You can see, like, the smoke and the, the, the fumes, whatever, going into the sky. You've got the beast pirates getting the men and the boys like, wait, please don't take him, daddy. And and then he's like, who do you think, you know, you've got that one, uh, you got the beast pirate just threatening them, who do you think you're mouthing off to? And then you've got shots, you've got a panel of the water basically going dirty at this point. Why has the river gone dark? And then there's no more drinking water. You've got a mother with a baby crying. And then you cut to this, to this depressing panel, which is just, which is just death. You got this one dude, and that, that, you know, there's there's dead there's dead leaves, there's dead like grass. It's just a wasteland at this point. You got a skull there. You've even got a tree with a freaking a uh, hangman new hangman noose there. Like like people have been committing suicide. Like, like that's the definition of that. That's the meaning of that right there. And you got the dude saying the crops won't grow and there's nothing left to eat. So yeah, this in, this entire area has just become a wasteland of death essentially. And in the background, you've got like four factories. Just 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 yeah. 
and, and, and then and then we cut to the factories and, or, and and maybe this is the this is the prison you've got the people like in chains and it's like if you can still breathe you can still work keep your hands moving you've scum and you've got one dad collapsing don't count on any miracles coming to save you the borders are staying closed and then we focus on that hangman noose and then we go to more panels of just people like throwing the crap it like it, it it's just torture that's what it is it's just torture we have to be patient it'll be a long winter but we have to believe in toki summer's words and and uh, Orochi, like, we, we get the panel of the people eating the small fruit. We don't see them eating it, but they're laughing. And it's like, look at these gluttonous fools, Kaido. They actually ate the leftovers of the defective small fruits. <laughs> and he's just dancing. He's just dancing like the little twat that he is. That's it. Let's have the rest of Ibusu Town follow suit. Their bellies will stay empty and their loved ones will continue to kneel over. But they won't be able to do anything except grin brightly. They'll never stop laughing. <laughs> It's the perfect fate for this country's pest. So, and that's, yeah, we get this big close-up shot of uh, Orochi, and then we cut to Orochi in his Hydra form, where he's about to kill Komorosaki, and he's like, he's just coughing, he's like, curse you, Komorosaki. You're look, looking like a freaking demon, man. Like, I mean, if you guys have ever seen the uh, the movie The Relic, that's a horror monster movie, yeah, yeah, at the end you've got the thing turning into like, it just catches on fire and it's just pure fire and you've got like the silhouette of it. It looks like this, man, and it, it, it's, um, yeah, it's giving me terrifying flashbacks of that, but uh, yeah, it's like, oh, I'm taking you with me. You shouldn't have underestimated the wrath of the Kurozumi Clyde. And Kurumasaki just, just standing there and not even terrified anymore, like she's accepting her fate and he's, and Orochi's like, I'll be seeing you in hell. We can drink together down there, but ha ha. And then we get the panel of some dude pulling his sword out. And he's like, seems things are getting out of hand here. Orochi looks over and we see Don Drew come in and slice his freaking head off. And he's protecting Kuromasaki while he's doing it. Like, it's just this awesome panel. Like, he's just got her like that. And he just <laughs> slices off. Like, it's great. It's a great freaking panel. And... And while this is happening, while this is happening, you've got the people in in the flower capital, and the, and the, and the you know the they're, they're putting the uh, what it, the light the light balloons, the lights what, that, that are going up, and they they got right on it. And one of them says, "Please make Orochi disappear." We get this awesome shot of uh, Danjiro's face close up, uh, and then we cut to Orochi's head falling down. Kuromasaki like just like just being correct, not being protected by Danjiro, and seeing it, the people screaming, and then there's more balloons, and they're saying, "Free us from this hell." give us a sip of clean water like it's depressing man like they're praying for this and it's actually happening and then we cut to uh the outside of onigashima to the top where the blast is going on where luffy is trying to punch kaido down and kaido just all blacked out like facing it head on and the present hears the cries of the past and that's the tagline for the end of the chapter and uh, that's the end of the chapter, and apparently we don't have a break next week, so we are going to get a, we're going to get a continuation of this, which is great. But it definitely means this fight's coming to an end now. I mean, Orochi at this point is dead, okay? That was his last head. Don Drew just decapitated this dude. Now, is it likely he's still alive? Uh, personally, I would find it hilarious if the head is still alive, and, and they just keep the head and use it to, as, a, as, a, as a football for the people to just torture him, like, if it is. I've said this before, but this dude, like, Orochi is one of the most scummiest characters. The fact that we get this one chapter focusing on all the hell that he brought onto Wano when he took over a shogun. Like, it's it's so it's so depressing and it's so pathetic. Like, this guy, he, he, he he's getting his revenge. But then, but like, just because of what the people did to his family line. And instead of maybe, you know, trying to show them that he is one of the good ones. That he, like, you know, the Kurosami clan, whatever, like, can be redeemed... He just go show, goes to show why they deserved to be executed in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Now, I know some people are going to be like, well, no, that's just like... But no, I don't think it is wrong at all. This scumbag just showed hands down why the Kazuki clan ha were, were in the right in, in wiping out this dude and his family line. They were in the right. Like, look what Orochi has done. Look what he's done to one on that. Like, not a shred of humanity, not a shred of mercy, nothing. There is nothing redeemable about his character. As far as I'm concerned, he got what, you know, his family line got what they had coming to him. Because if they were every bit as nasty and as scumbaggy as he is, they deserved it then, as far as I'm concerned. And, yeah, I would prefer if he had been tortured more. I mean, if this is the end of Orochi, then fair enough, good, brilliant. I hope he doesn't come back then. But if it's not the end, then, um, 
and I don't know, like he's going to be tortured for eternity after this? Yes, please, please. This guy deserves to suffer for what he did to Iwano. He deserves to suffer for for 20 years. Like, like they inflicted 20 years of pain. He deserves to suffer for 20 years then. Um, and, then and then be killed, be, be put out of his bloody mercy. But... Uh, yeah, I liked I liked this chapter. I liked that Don Drew came back. I think it's been a year. Like people have been saying it's been a year since he lost Swerve. So it's like it's funny. Like like you where have you been for a year, dude? And he's like, oh, just 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 hiding in the corner there. Like now he's back. So yeah, no, that's great. But yeah, it looks like we're definitely uh, getting the ending of this fight. Uh, I think by chapter ten fifty, this this fight will, it, it, we're gonna get like the final knockout or punch, and Luffy's gonna send Kylo crushing down. Uh... I do have this weird theory though that may maybe when that happens, maybe we'll still get an extended fight maybe where, where they fight on the ground, on the capital ground maybe, outside of it, and the, and the fight in the crater perhaps, like a final beat down if you will, uh, maybe, maybe not, but uh, I, I really just want this fight to end now at this point, and I want this arc to just sort of like get complete now at this point, and it's going to be very interesting to see how many chapters we have left before Wano actually officially end because I, I still think we have to get Kaido's flashbacks. I think by ten fifty Kaido will get defeated and then most likely will will it'll be like it'll say the end of Act Three and then we'll start Act Four and it's just gonna be flashbacks with Kaido and God knows how long those are gonna be. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, usually I think uh, uh Oda does those very quickly so it could be very quick flashbacks like a volume where we just get flashbacks on Kaido's backstory and that and we learn a bunch of stuff that we didn't know before. That may or may not change our perception of the character, and then uh, and then obviously we we get like an act five, like an epilogue act to wrap everything up. But uh, yeah, uh, very good chapter. Can't wait to see this end. Um, honestly, I don't know what more to say, man. Like, uh, just, just, it looks awesome. Like, uh, if I was watching the anime, this would be freaking great to see animated. But. Uh, <laughs> The anime is so slow these days. I still need to see it. I mean, I've got the first, like, 500 episodes uh, on DVD. I still haven't watched it yet. It's been, like, nearly, like, two years. I think it's been a year now. Nearly a nearly year and a half that I bought these and I haven't watched it yet. But uh, I'll get there. I'll get there eventually. I'll get there eventually. One day. <laughs> One day. I uh, hope you guys liked my review reaction to this. Uh, very good chapter. And as always, guys, remember to like and subscribe. Can't wait for next week. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen next week. Oh, maybe Oda will surprise us and Kaido gets knocked out next chapter. But uh, uh, I think that I think Luffy will hit him next chapter. And then 1050 is going to be the one where he just goes crushing down. And then it's like, yeah, it's over. It's done. Like, Luffy won the fight. Boom, done. But uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see that. Anyway, guys, uh, enjoy yourselves. And take care. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and... Bye. I'm assuming you watched uh, my 1048 review, so uh, let's get on with uh, 1049 then. So, uh, One Piece chapter 1049, The World You Wish For. So we 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 start off with another, uh, you know, Germa 66's Cold Blooded Voyage Volume 11. What the the book in the research lab is on fire. That means those two are free. So we see. We see uh, the two brothers, uh, I think Yoji and, and Ninji, is it, uh, being freed. Uh, the book burning, obviously, around them, and uh, the other, you know, Big Mama's kids uh, screaming in terror. We don't know how they escape, though. Like, someone's using fire abilities. I'm assuming this might... Could this be Subo, perhaps, somehow? I mean, the only the only character I can think of that can use uh, fire abilities is Subo. So, is this Subo being revealed alive? Because we don't know what's happened to him since the reverie. Or maybe someone's certain people's theories about this being crocodile, like coming in to rescue them, is true. But more, more than like, more than likely, it's 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 their brother and and Raiju coming to rescue them because we did end with that uh, last chapter. We did have that revelation where it's like it's them, it's the other German uh, uh, siblings coming to the rescue. But it was it was left with a question mark, almost as if is it them? Do you know what I mean? So we're still waiting for that revelation because there could be a big twist in this uh, cover story where. It's someone else. Like we assume it's it's their siblings, but it's someone else. Uh, but you know, the only one I can think of of using fire abilities is 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 Sanji's uh for, you know first brother, whoever the number one is, because we have number two and number four here. So yeah, um, 
And we'll continue on with that. We'll continue on with that. Um, but yeah, going with the actual chapter, we leave off with where we... Where did we leave off? Uh, Momonosuke still trying to create bloody flame clouds and Luffy trying to punch Kaido through. And he's he's basically waiting for... He's basically waiting for Momonosuke to get Onigashima out of the way before he can do it. And a fearsome hockey clash. Who will prevail? And haha. And we get this, yeah, we get we get Luffy just punching Kaido, and Kaido, you know, he's taking that hit, he's taking that hit, he's 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 hocking himself up, you know, his entire body, and he's taking the, he's taking that hockey punch as well, and he's like, well played. And Luffy, he's like, he's struggling at this point, he's like, uh, I have to hand it to you uh, for coming this far, but you'll never be able to change the world. And this chapter finally gives us some flashbacks to Kaido that we have been asking for for years now, and, uh, Let's go through them. So we we flash back to a young Kaido. I don't know if he, I don't. I think he's a teen at this point. Maybe he is a kid. Uh, he did it. He he may only be ten years old. He's ten years old at this point, and we see like a very fiery background. He's got his club, not as big, just just a big long club. Uh, he does have the horns and that. He may only be ten years old, but that Kaido kid is the strongest soldier around. I'm still itching for more. So people are praising him, and he's he's already a badass at this point. And then 46 years ago, the kingdom of Watka. So there's a kingdom called Watka. I'm uh, I'm assuming this is not the first time we've had uh, we've had a country or area named after a drink because we had Whiskey Peak, I believe. So now we have uh, the kingdom of Watka. Now we know why Kaido is a drunk. Like I mean, with, with your with, with a kingdom called Watka, I'm assuming everyone's drinking themselves silly, right? Maybe this is meant to be related or inspired by Russia, perhaps. Maybe I'm not too sure, but. Uh, yeah, we, we see the kingdom and it's like, our nation has no choice but to wage war. I don't know if this is something that Oda just decided to do like right off the bat because of this whole thing that's going on with uh, Russia and Ukraine. And he just thought, I'm going to throw that in there, like make Kaido a Russian perhaps. I don't know if that's that's related to that. I mean, the whole, our, our nation has no choice but to wage war. Like, I feel like that's too in the face maybe, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, we, we ended up getting like a, a freaking uh, Iron Throne chair. Uh, like hundreds of chapters ago, right? Uh, when, when, it, well, I think when Im or whatever, when the reverie was happening, and that was basically a massive reference to Game of Thrones. So I don't know. This is just Oda's way of uh, referencing what's going on in the current world, perhaps, which is pretty insane. Uh, the loot we acquire is our only means of paying the celestial tribute. If we fail to do that, we will lose our standing in the world. And Kaido's like, why do the celestial dragons get to boss you around? Kaido, enough. And we see that he's in a throne room and he's chained up. So this must be the, the, the king or the leader of the kingdom. And he's like, we have offered you up for navy enlistment. Uh, to be, uh, and he's like, you want me to be a government dog? To be blunt, our country can't handle you. So so the, 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 the leader of, of the kingdom of Vodka has chained up Kaido. And because he's like one of the strongest soldiers and the fact that they can't handle him, God knows what he's been doing that they can't handle him. They're, they're giving him to the Marines, basically, to make him enlist in there. And he doesn't want to do that. Like, like we're getting some sort of parallel here between him and Luffy, basically, where he wants freedom. And he and he, he does not see that with the Marines. And you've got this Marine Marine saying, if you hand him over now, you are guaranteed a seed at the next reverie. And Kaido's like, I'm not a political bargaining chip, damn it. Kaido escaped. And we get his wanted poster, 70,000, uh, I don't know, 700,000, whatever. I don't know, is that... Is that a million? Is that I think it's a million, maybe seventy thousand million. Um, and he's like, we already caught him though. Like you got the Marines just like we caught him though. Did he really escape again? I heard he gets caught on purpose when he's hungry. A prison ship isn't a buffet. So we get this big confirmation then that all those times that Kaido got caught most likely was due to the fact that he just wanted food. Like he wanted to be fed, and that's why he allowed himself to get captured. So it's actually pretty clever, really. Like he knows he's very strong. He knows he can you know he can escape every single time. But hey. You know, it's either you know it's either starving to death or a free meal, right? And if it involves you getting captured, so be it. I'm just gonna you know he's just gonna get out of the way anyway. So uh, that's pretty funny actually. And then we 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 go two years from the 26 years. It's 44 years ago now. Pirate Island of full full elite. I think this is um this is the pirate island where we last saw Blackbeard with um Moria. It's got the giant skull like like a mountain, and you got the city beneath it. And we see that he's beaten he's we see Kaido, he's beaten someone up. So, you know, if this was six years ago, 
40, if this was 46 years ago and he was 10 years old, he would be 12 now at this point. He does seem a bit taller now. Um, he's so strong. Who the hell is this guy? How can he only be 15? So he's 15 now. It's two years later and he's 15 now. Interesting. Shouldn't it be three years? Is that is that a mistake? Um, I guess he might have turned he might have turned 13 during that period and then it's two years later and he's 15 now. And it, he, this is Kaido meeting Whitebeard. So now we're, we're seeing Kaido meet Whitebeard at this place and he's like, hey Brad, you want to be a pirate? Rocks wants to meet you. What will you do? So we've been getting a lot of information about Rocks. Uh, we still don't know who he is. But uh, yeah, let's not forget that Whitebeard, Big Mom, and, and Kaido were part of this uh, pirate crew. I don't know if Roger was part of this pirate crew or not. Uh, he might have not been, or he might have been. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember. I just know that uh, Grump, was it? Defeated defeated uh, Rocks, I think. So I need to go back and reread the series, man. Uh, so yeah, we see young Kaido, and, and then we see him on a ship, which I'm assuming is the Rocks pirate ship, and he's like, Kaido joined the Rocks, Rocks pirates? They're unstoppable now. And uh, Kaido, come quick, it's important. We're, we're going to God Valley, and we see someone enter. Like, someone open uh, the door to, to the hold where Kaido is. We see a silhouette. Uh, and we don't see who it is. Uh, they're wearing a hat. I think this could be Big Mom, actually. We're going to God Valley. We see the people screaming, like, uh, like they got, like, there's people wearing Vikings, whatever. The rocks have fallen. So this is, this is back to that period, I think, where we're going back to the, uh, Skull Island, whatever. Are you kidding? With all the monsters on that crew? I heard a marine called Grump beat them. And then you've got this one person with a hat, I think, screaming, no way, I bet they're in fighting, did them in. None of them were team players. Don't screw with me. Where the hell did you go, Kaido? And then we see, uh, I think, Orochi's grandma or whatever, like, you know, the hag or whatever that, that can use the uh, uh, disguising fruit. And she's like, 10 years have passed since that incident, Kaido. So it's 10 years later, so he would have been 15 and now, so he's 25 at this point. 10 years have passed since that incident, Kaido. You're now known as the embodiment of brutality. Goya, 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 goya. If you study history, humans have always resorted to brutality to solve the world's problems. And we, we so this is a flat, another flash, or oh, technically it's a flashback, but we're flashing forward in the flashback. We see, you know, Kaido's now uh, the, a, the leader, the captain of his own pirate crew. We've got the hag there, we've got King there sitting by his side on a treasure chest. And he's like, uh, and he's like, but then again, humans are just like any other animal. Survival of the fittest is our true nature. And Kaido's like, couldn't agree more. From now on, everything will revolve around the former members of the Rocks crew. And you've got the hag saying, Weapon, weapons shape the world we live in. With that in mind, I have a proposition for you. Koya, 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 koya. So this, this chick ends up convincing Kaido to go to Wano, basically, and take it over. And do, doing the whole weapon factory thing. And then I, I believe we see Kaido. I think I think this is him at Wano now at this point. I'm not too sure. And he's like, let's show all these peace-loving nobles the hellish reality of war. Yeah! One's worth can only truly be gauged in battle where everyone is equal and anarchy reigns free. So he wants freedom, but freedom in the case of just utter chaos, essentially. Uh, and then uh, we see we see him continue. We see him talking to King at this point. I think I think this is King. And he's like Yamato mentioned Joy Boy. Not sure how that brat learned his name. The if it, and he's like uh, and King's like apparently Oda wanted to open one or to joy to welcome Joy Boy. And King he clearly is aware of who this is. And Kaido's like if Joy Boy is the same man that you're waiting for, King, then I know who he is. And King asks him who is it. Who is Joy Boy? So Kaido's got a good idea who you know Joy Boy is, and then we we flash we flash to the present. Uh, Onigashima, you know, beneath Kaido and, and Luffy above Kaido, trying to like he wants to punch him down. The clouds are the clouds are breaking apart. Great bloody visual, and then we got a CPO member escaping. I think it's the last survivor, by the way. I don't know. I don't know if this is the guy that got previously hit. I think this is someone else, and he's tapping. Literally tap tap tap. He's tapping out of there. Uh, it's the one with the, uh, he's got like the two lines going down the uh, circular eye, uh, and yeah, he's just escaping, touching his hat, whoever he is, he's just, he's getting the hell out of there, and yeah, and Luffy's like, you, you've got Luffy, will, and, and someone's screaming, I think it's Momonosuke, he's he's seeing the fight as it's going on, he's like, Luffy will win, I know it, and, and Yamato's like, do it, Momonosuke-kun, 
and and Momonosuke just screaming, "Come forth, flame clouds, obey me!" And we cut into the flower capital. We got the freaking uh, lanterns going up. Everyone's celebrating. Everyone's cheering. Everyone is wishing for the best. Yeah, continuing on from where we left off. Everyone's cheering. We cut into the life flame dome, uh, floor dome. Sorry, interior on Nagashima. We see kid there, like. Like, like maybe I think he's trying to recover from whatever was ever knocked him out. Basically, we're seeing the water. Basically, like that the fire is still going on. There's still fire going and on. And then we got Kawawatsu, I think, and he's like, "What is that record?" And we, we cut to Raizo and Jibei, and he's like, "The water of Zhao shall save everyone." We see Brooke uh, and Robin in the water. He's like, "Robin, son, glug glug glug." Remember, Brooke is a devil fruit, so he can't swim in that water. We're cutting to some of the minks. Uh, as well, swimming through the water. We see Beppo, you know, uh, like coming out of the water, I think. We see Apu, he survived, I'm, I'm assuming. The water's going down. We, we catch up with Law and one of his crewmates, like, huh? And we see just water rushing in and washing all the water away where Kawawatsu and the old grandpa is. They're seeing all of this occur. We see Kinemon and Kiku like washing up with Usopp and Nami and Toma and Chopper see there's like water and you can see the water literally splash out of, flying down out of Onigashima. And it's actually, uh, it's actually, the water is actually getting rid of the flame clouds, which means that Onigashima is, is going to fall down now uh, because, the, yeah, the flame clouds are gone. And uh, we're cutting into Sanji, you know, people are just like, they're trying to swim and hang on, you know, or so much, uh, where did this water come from? You know, Sanji holding on to one of the, the ladies while he's got hearts in his eyes. We're cutting to Frank and he's like, careful, you're getting washed away. Um, yeah, people are just getting dragged. Like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm curious what's going to happen. Like, are people going to be holding on or not? We're cutting to Donjiru and, uh, and Hiorio, uh, that, you know, in the treasure respiratory second floor. And he's like, you've done well really well and he's hugging her he's protecting her like and she's hugging him back to have endured this for so many moons and we're getting a shot of Orochi's flaming decapitated head no twitching no movement no sign whatsoever that he's alive and Donjiro just looking down at her like as he's holding her he's like he or he or you know Hayori Sama and we get a little flashback when he first bent his hair down where his hair literally bent down and touched the floor and uh, she's hugging him tightly, like, and like, the island, isn't it falling? And yeah, like, the, the water's washed all the flames away, but it's also washed the flame clouds, because it's coming out of, the, out of the island, and it's going down on the flame clouds, and it's washing them away. And Yomoto's screaming, like, the flame clouds are gone, not good! And Onigashima and Momonosuke just losing it, like, it's going to crash! And, and we're cutting back to the fight, man. Like, uh, we see Luffy, like, he's he, he's got his arm, he's got his hockey arm in, in, in Kaido's freaking mouth now. Like, hockey mouth versus hockey arm, and he's like, straw hat. You know, he's asking him, what kind of world do you wish to make? And he's asking him this very serious question, all of this is happening. And we're cutting to, like, Momonosuke, he's like, flame clouds are clear, like. And upon command, the flame clouds finally appear of the oldest time you know a lot of us had theories maybe that the that Momonosuke would use the uh, the, la the lanterns or whatever to create flame uh, clouds around them that's not the case when it when it uh, it does feel like a ex machina do you know what I mean like solution like at the last minute like when all hope is lost Momonosuke is like flame clouds are clear it's, it's, it's almost like uh, Johnny Storm in the Fantastic Four when he's four he's like screaming flame on and it's like like that's similar to what's going on flame clouds up here and Yamato is shocked by this, and Momonosuke is surprised by this, and we see flame clouds going all around Onigoshima, and he moves it out of the way from Kaido, finally giving Luffy the, the moment he's been waiting for, the moment, the opportunity to knock Kaido down into the ground, and he's like, and Luffy, he, you know, he gives Kaido his, his answer, you know, what, what, and the answer being, you know, the question was, what kind of world do you wish to make, and Luffy's answer is basically, a world where my friends can eat as much as they like and we see Luffy just crush down you see the shock waves emitting from his arm he's crushing down onto like uh, like uh, Kaido's open jaw like and it it knocks him down it knocks Kaido's head down from the force and Kaido's eyes just sort of rolling back in his head and he gets hit it hits it hits and that's my kind of world as Luffy screams this and Luffy, you know, Kaido's eyes just like opening up, like seeing that intensity and BAM! BAM! He hits him! He knocks him out, sparks flying! 
and Kaido goes down. He's going down fast, like a freaking bullet. He goes down and smack. He's down. He's down on the ground. We're cutting to the lanterns now. You know, some of the lanterns saying, please vanquish the scary dragon. Restore the, Kuz the Kazuki clan. People cheering. And we get this panel of Kaido, like, like, on the ground. On the ground, I think, like, burning up still. And he's cutting back. He's cutting back. He's having a flashback to, to that moment with King. And he's like, King, I know who he is. And King's saying, who is it? And Kaido, young Kaido, in that moment, you know, when he's remembering himself, saying that the Joy Boy is the man who will be able to beat me one day. And King responds, if that's true, I don't think he'll ever appear. Well, he certainly has appeared. The people's wishes have been granted. And we see Kaido hit the ground. He's on the ground, fund, and we see Onigashima land next to him. And Kaido... His tongue is out, he looks like he's sort of knocked, he, it, it, mostly he looks like he's very dazed and knocked out, like he's, his eyes are still, like he's going into sleep mode at this point, and Luffy as well looks like he's exhausted, because it looks like he's falling now, and we get this final, final attack line, 20 years in the making, 20 years in the making, yeah? Oda, you should have put 25 or whatever years in the making, because then that would have been, that would have been, oh my god! And we get the re we also get the confirmation that there's a break next week. One Piece is on break next week. God damn it! God damn it! Like ah, oh. Luffy did it. After all the build up, he did it. He knocked Kaido down. But I don't think this is the end. It does certainly. It, 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 we certainly do get the big foreshadowing here, of course, with Kaido remembering. You know, back in that day, like the only that you know, he'll, he'll know it's Joy Boy if it's you know, depending on whoever beats him. And with this, I think Kaido will acknowledge. I think he is still gonna fight, but it's gonna be more of a fight between like like men of honor, if you will. What I think is gonna happen next is is we're gonna get Kaido's flashbacks. We're gonna go through these flashbacks. We're gonna see Luffy struggling. Kaido is gonna be struggling. They're both exhausted. They're both tired. They're going to transform back to their normal versions. And they're going to have one last beat down with Kaido. At this point, he confronts Luffy and he says, and he accepts him. He's like, you are Joy Boy. And he's just going to be like, in a normal fight, hand to hand, fist versus fist. Let's just, let's just continue having fun until one of us gets knocked out. But at this point, or gets even killed maybe. At this point, maybe Kaido is going to be egging Luffy on to kill him, perhaps. And Luffy's like, he's going to beat his ass with whatever strength he has left. But he's going to be like, no, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. I still think that sword in the, uh, in, in a giant sword in Onigashima Island is going to play some sort of role. Because I feel like Kaido does need to die, I think. Because uh, the, the entire story has sort of been building up to him dying, essentially. Like, ever since we met him, he's been suicidal. And I think, I think something does need to happen with that. Like, uh, but who's gonna, who's gonna pick, grab a giant sword and he's decapitate Kaido? Do you know what I mean? And that's just my personal thoughts. If he doesn't die, that's fine. Uh, it would be, it would be very interesting for Kaido to like sort of bend down to Luffy and finally accept him. with like, you, you are greater than me, etc., etc. You beat me, but like, he's probably gonna be. But I do think he's gonna be like begging him to kill him, and Luffy's just gonna be like, no, I'm not gonna do that, and that's gonna be someone else probably gonna do it, maybe one of the samurai, maybe Zoro, maybe someone else is gonna do it, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see how that goes, but for now, what an incredible fight, okay, I think this fight, did this start back in chapter 1000, because that was the rooftop meeting, wasn't it, so for 49 chapters, we've, we, we've, we've been having this fight going on, and Kaido just taking these hits, taking all the L's, and Luffy similar as well, and, and finally, getting that, uh, I don't even think it's a knockout at this point, I don't think it's a knockout, uh, it's not how I imagined uh, this knockout would go, do you know what I mean, like, uh, I, feel, I feel like there's more to it than that, but, uh, it's crazy, uh, and we still have Azushina into play with the, with the uh, uh, marine ships as well, we have to see how that goes, and we need to open the borders as well, like, the breaking the wall, the water floor, uh, the waterfall, whatever, seeing what happens with that. But yeah, what an incredible chapter. Amazing that we finally got Kaido's flashbacks and we see that he, you know, he, like, he's very similar to Luffy in terms of 
the kind of freedom he yearns for, but very opposites as well. Like, like his version of freedom is very chaotic versus Luffy's kind of freedom. And what, you know, what he wants to give, like, like, or, and, like, showing that he does care, like, he cares a lot, like, for his friends and that. Whereas his Kaido was just putting, will put everyone into suffering because he just wanted, he wanted to create as much chaos as possible. And hearing this story about Joy Boy, I'd be mean, like, yeah, Joy Boy. So, yeah, most likely Joy Boy was, like, a fiction that King told him in it. And then now he's come to this big, he's, he's come to this, most likely have come to this big realization now that Joy Boy is real. Man, that, those stories I, I used to think were just fake or, or BS, they're real. This is Joy Boy, holy crap. Great. You can kill me now, etc, etc, maybe. I don't know, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see where they go, where all that goes with Kaido here. But, an amazing chapter. And, man, it's it's annoying that we have to wait an, a week before we get the uh, next part of the chapter. But, uh, Oda has done, has done himself proud. And I just want to say to all the One Piece fans, this is this is an amazing moment in the making. It really is. 20 years in the making. Uh, personally, if I was old, I would have put, like, the actual year date of how long this series has been going on for. But, uh, yeah, wh whatever, man. Like, obviously, obviously, because uh, uh, Wano Country has been under Kaido's rule for 20 years. So it does make sense. 20 years in the making. It, it fits perfectly. Uh, it certainly is. And uh, it's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. Like, what an amazing chapter. And yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes from here. Like, if we're gonna get some sort of final manner or manner or beat down, do you know what I mean? In this in this crate or whatever. If it's even, if it, if a crate has even been created, do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, uh, I hope you guys like that. Uh, as always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you guys. Take care and bye.